everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about muscle tension. This is an interesting little concept, a little bit of runner's kind of lore information, nuance for sure. If you're not a runner, I would probably not want to watch this video because it's going to be very, very, very running specific. If you are a runner, hopefully today at the end of the video, you'll leave being like, hmm, okay. I want to give you guys a little hmm. Actually, the reason I'm talking about this is because I would I might have been personally afflicted by this on my last race. So without further ado, uh, let me take you guys to the fire uh, plant side chat. Okay, I don't have a fire in my apartment. I just have my plants, which can be a plant side chat instead of a fire side. Chat. All right, so muscle tension. What is it, and will it help you run faster race times? So whenever I delve into something kind of sciencey or it becomes like a lecture or it's informational and it's not like, you know, with like fun camera edits and music and stuff, you know, this will always be like what we reference. Like this is all great, but will it help me run faster race times? A great example is the video I made about carbohydrates and how if you don't eat carbohydrates, it'll kill your running performance here. And like, I got a lot of, uh, mm not so nice responses and people were talking about all this stuff and it's like they kind of forgot the main, the main, the bigger picture, the goal, the whole point with it was, will it help me run faster? So today, muscle tension, um, this isn't as controversial as not eating carbohydrates or eating carbohydrates or whatever. A really kind of interesting little, little bit of kind of physiology. So I'll try to package it in an interesting way for you guys. And uh, yeah, so I had my marathon about a month ago and I had all this beautiful training leading up to it. But then on the day of the race, I showed up and I felt, and it, the same thing happened last year on my previous marathon. Like I had all this beautiful training, but then on the day of the race, it felt blah. And I, I was really curious, like why? And I was kind of racking my brain, thinking about things. And I was of course doing Google like everybody else would, you know, kind of like, what's the problem? Like, and how can I fix it? And I came across this, which I thought was kind of interesting. And it was this concept of muscle tension. So the short answer of what muscle tension is, it's it's either your legs feeling fresh and having like pop in your step and you feel like strong and powerful and you've got like spring and you're like feel spry and it's that like you're ready to go, right? Or the opposite is the feeling of if there's no muscle tension, it's the feeling of kind of feeling uh, slow and sluggish, kind of slow to response. You're a little slower off the ground. You just don't feel as, you don't have as much pop. You don't feel like you have as much spring in your step, right? So I've been kind of cruising the internet for a little bit, looking up about some more, looking for some more research, some like science-based research that could cover this. Cause everything I found, there, there were some fantastic articles written by people and I'll link all of them below, which is kind of more getting, I'm getting a lot of this information from the articles. But you guys know, like, I, like articles are nice, but I want to see like data and science. So there's a bit of um, authenticity kind of behind it. So there's some beautiful articles. The most prominent, I think, came to mind is uh, one by Steve Magnus, and he he's super science based and research based. Um, he's got like a master's in physiology. He's like he's very experienced. But in the article that he wrote, he didn't link any like actual research. It was kind of, oh, like, come on, man, give me the good stuff. Give me the sexy stuff. Anyway, so that's the short answer for what muscle tension is. Can understanding it, can watching this next few minutes help me run faster race times? The answer is yes, it, it can. So stay tuned and we'll talk about it. The long answer for what muscle tension is, is basically we have like your muscles, right? Um, a muscle here, a muscle. God, it's so dark. All right, sorry, I came back to the window. It's it's getting dark out and there's not enough light and I look, uh, I put the plant there, so it's still. So muscle tension, so you have your muscle, okay? Let's just take the bicep, which runner's biceps. So the bicep starts here and it connects down here beyond uh, like at the, just past the elbow, right? So it connects here. So the two terms you wanna think about are muscle tension or stiffness in the literature and then muscle length, okay? So obviously stretching the bicep, if you can find like a nice stretching position, will, will lengthen uh, the muscle fiber a little bit, but it will also decrease muscle tension or muscle stiffness, right? And so there's basically like a little curve. And so if you stretch the muscle, the tension will decrease, but the length will increase. And if you kind of like think, do other things which we'll talk about in the video so basically you don't stretch it muscle tension will increase and the idea is that with a higher bit of tension there's actually more more force and more power produced because the elasticity is still kind of there a great example i always heard in school is like think of like a rubber band right so you have a rubber band and if you stretch the rubber band it kind of loses some of its 
rubber banding this. They, so, that, so people always love to compare muscle to rubber band. So that's a long answer for muscle tension. Just think like stretching it kind of reduces tension because the elasticity is reduced, but not stretching it will kind of increase tension, which will can increase, okay. But thinking of the short answer, it's, you know, how can you feel fresh and springy and have pop in your step on, a, on a, an important workout or an important race day, right? I'm sure you guys, you runners out there, like I'm sure you've all have had um, you know, workouts where you just kind of start and feel great and you feel, you feel amazing, but then you've also had workouts or races um, where you just don't feel like you should. You're not like overtrained, you're not like tired, you just generally your body isn't responding as you feel it should. So with me, with my marathon, uh, I was doing a bit of kind of analysis, analysis paralysis, and the week before, um, the week of my race, I, I, took, I took three days and I didn't run a step which is really weird for me. Like the most usual I'll ever take is one day off, I won't do anything. For whatever reason, I felt like I needed to have a bit of recovery. I think I was feeling stale or I was feeling overtrained and I thought it would be beneficial just to take some time off thinking that, um, you know, the more the recovery, the better. Like, like obviously more rest equals more recovery equals everyone's happy, faster race times. Um, but I think what happened was that time off was, was, was great, but also the, the, the tension in my muscles was, was kind of reduced and so because I wasn't running and so the muscles kind of weren't being active and everything just kind of like relaxed a little bit which is good sometimes but before a major race probably not the best so when I started the marathon you know a month ago I, I just didn't feel I didn't feel fresh I didn't feel I didn't have that pop in my step and I didn't feel good honestly until the last half of the race after I had been running for like an hour or whatever that's when I kind of started feeling like like I, like I had a bit of pop in my step which was a bit too late unfortunately. I ran negative splits. I ran the last half of my race super fast, uh, much faster than the first half, but then the first half was kind of sluggish. So there you go. All right, so that's kind of number one. This is what muscle tension is. This is how it can affect you. This is how you could, if, if you if you can kind of play with it a little bit, you could have faster running times, which is what we're all kind of concerned about. Number two is like, what's the research that can actually back this kind of idea up? Like this isn't, I'm not here to put like voodoo out there. I want you guys to have a bit of science behind this. So I'll link all the articles I found, you know, that there's an actual research. I'll link those below, which are, I think are a great reference point. Um, and then I'll also link the research, which I'm about to talk about below as well. So in the literature, there's nothing really on muscle tension. Uh, with the specifics, they usually call it muscle stiffness. So that's kind of what I was looking for. The, in the literature, and the, and, the way, and the way things are always kind of talked about, they don't really talk about how the runner feels, but um, what you could like look for is running economy, because this is kind of what all these things kind of tend to influence. If you're not talking about improving a specific energy system, like aerobic or anaerobic, the other stuff really usually touches on like, like running economy. Every now and then you'll hear something uh, talk about like kind of mental state and that kind of thing. Things that I found were basically correlated to muscle force, tension, muscle power, and then kind of its influence on running economy, which is pretty standard. I, th I think everyone's heard in some capacity that like plyometric exercises can improve running economy, right? Plyometric exercises happen to be one of the things you can do before a workout or race, like a day before, to increase muscle tension. And so there's a really cool study I found. So one study I found was really cool saying that greater muscle stiffness um, and actually less muscle power kind of maximize running economy, which is pretty cool. Another one was talking about efficiency with running with a muscle being maximized when there's less, when the required volume of muscle is minimized. So basically like, you know, a shorter muscle um, has to do less work because there's less like surface area than a bigger muscle will. So there's like less metabolic cost, thus higher efficiency. Okay. Linked below. Oh my God, it's getting so dark. I'm so sorry. And if you guys don't look up any more stuff about running economy, go for it. There's also some really cool things, you know, like I'll link this as well. There's another thing about Eliud Kipchoge, you know, like the amazing marathon runner that you guys, he just won the London marathon. And he has like the world record and everything. Apparently like he's so inflexible that he can't really touch his toes and everyone kind of makes fun of him. Ha 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 ha. This is kind of like something you hear about in, in, in track circles where like the sprinters are super inflexible and the distance runners are a little more flexible. Uh, because again, the idea it's that you know, if a, if a, if a muscle is longer, then there's kind of uh, less tension, there's less potential for force production or like a higher force production, right? And you, and when you're thinking about running, which is a series of repetitive one-legged, you know, exercises, you want to have a little bit of pop to it. So, so that's muscle tension. That's kind of the research behind it. Again, just talking about kind of like muscle length and its relation to muscle economy and that kind of stuff. And there's a ton of research about. Um, kind of improving that. So, but specifically with running, like how do you incorporate this or, or 
are decorporated if you're doing, if you have too high to muscle tension in, in your training. I thought about it in kind of really practical ways for you guys because I'm sure you guys have your own routine with running and the last thing you want to do is like add like a whole other spiel into it, you know, because you only have like an hour or whatever to run a day and there's like adding more stuff just kind of makes it more block. So basically, so the short and sweet could be something like this. The day before a race, the day before a workout, think about adding some strides. Um, I'm sorry, it's not, it's not really anything, anything sexier than that. And I'm sure if you're an experienced runner out there, you're like, well, of course I do strides before a race. You know, I didn't because I don't, I don't know why I just didn't. So, and I just don't typically, I guess. But this is one of the things, and I'll list, I'll list the articles which had much more exercises and ideas on how to increase tension. But what to do like the day before a workout or the days leading up to a race is it's kind of like kind of hone your muscle tension. So think fast strides, like four to six. 20 or 30 seconds, pretty hard, like 95% effort with a big recovery, obviously. Or you could do like like some skips and kind of jumps and hops, again, big recovery. But if you're not used to that, then I wouldn't start to incorporate it. So those are kind of like the plyometric exercises to kind of help increase tension. I um, talked about running on, uh, running on asphalt and on concrete because it's like a higher force production, but isn't everyone running on asphalt or concrete anyways? And then there's the opposite end of the spectrum where maybe your muscle tension is too high. So think like maybe you're primed to run like a 400, like you feel like ultra, like amazing and you feel have a lot of pop in your step, but maybe for a marathon, it's not the best. So ways to decrease muscle tension would be like massage, like a hot bath, jogging really slow on the grass, uh, anything that kind of like um, essentially kind of relaxes the muscle tissue. There was a really cool little bit I found. Um, and actually this is kind of where this whole thing started from. It was this guy, this Norwegian guy. I'll put his name right here. Basically, he, he was like an old pro and he was like super good. He ran like 13.055K and then he uh, he kind of retired and like and like the good Warner that he was, he decided to retire, but then also kind of do research on running, which is just, oh, thank you, you're, you're doing God's work. So that other people could be faster. Is that better? I am so sorry, it's so dark right now. This is kind of where the whole muscle tension thing started. And so I'll list his website below. And he said that you could actually start to kind of press on the muscle tissue. And if it's easy to kind of like push into it and doesn't require a lot of force, then maybe your muscle tension is low. And then if you try to push on the muscle tissue, think like your quad or something, and there's a bit of resistance there, like ee, 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 like boop, 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 like pushes back, then your muscle tension's high. That's another way you can kind of palpate and check. And his whole theory was actually really nice because he was just talking about how, you know, the week or two weeks before a race, you can't increase fitness, which is true. But what you can start to kind of focus on is kind of honing this muscle tension, doing like certain types of workouts, like a day or three days out or five days out or seven days out before a race. So yeah, that's kind of all, everything I found on muscle tension. I'll link all the research below as usual. But the key takeaway is, is kind of like before a big race, maybe the day before, just do some strides. And um, maybe like five or seven days before a race, do something faster and harder, you know, at or faster than race pace to kind of keep muscle tension a bit higher. Typically, I think that's I think that's the biggest issue for most people if you're feeling flat and you're kind of feeling sluggish. Honestly, there could be a potential that the reason you're watching this video is because you don't want to feel flat or sluggish on race day. So this is a good way to kind of do it. So don't make my mistake, please. Day before race, do some strides, maybe do some hops and jumps and something. Um, and yeah, kind of have fun with it. And I hope you guys can all start your workouts and your races having that really nice, fresh, poppy, amazing feeling because I think we all deserve that if we're putting a lot of hard training, right? Um, okay, uh, that's it. I'm so sorry I got so dark out. I waited too long to make the video and here you are. So I hope everyone has a lovely day, lovely weekend, and I will see you guys next week. All right, bye. Ah.